Hello dear listener please subscribe to our channel enjoy watching. You ever wake up one day and realize that your entire life has been a lie? Not in the dramatic, Hollywood way, but in a slow, creeping realization that everything you've built, everything you thought was solid, is crumbling beneath your feet? That's where I found myself one Thursday afternoon, sitting at my desk at work, staring at my computer screen but not seeing a damn thing. It all started a few months back. My wife, Jenna, and I had been married for 10 years, 10 long, mostly good years. We had our ups and downs like any couple, but we were solid. Or at least I thought we were. But lately, something had shifted. Jenna had become distant, distracted, like she was living in some parallel universe where I was just an extra in the background. I tried to ignore it at first, convincing myself that it was just stress or maybe a midlife crisis. But the signs were there, clear as day, if only I'd had the guts to see them. The first real clue came when Jenna started going out more. At first, it was just a night here and there, dinner with friends, or a late night work meeting. But then it became a regular thing, every Thursday night, she'd go out and wouldn't come home until well past midnight. When I'd ask where she'd been, she'd give me some vague answer about a new book club or a girls' night out. I wanted to believe her, I really did. But there was something in the way she said it, something in her eyes that made my stomach twist with doubt. And then there was the phone. Jenna had always been pretty open with her phone, leaving it on the kitchen counter or the coffee table without a second thought. But recently, she'd started keeping it close, always within arm's reach, like it was some kind of lifeline. She'd get a text and quickly glance at it before tucking the phone away, out of sight. It was subtle, but I noticed. And it gnawed at me, day and night, until I couldn't take it anymore. That Thursday afternoon, I made up my mind. I wasn't going to sit around and let my life fall apart without a fight. So, I did something I never thought I'd do, I decided to follow her. When Jenna got home from work that evening, she was in a rush. She barely said two words to me before heading upstairs to change. I watched her go, my heart pounding in my chest. This was it, the moment of truth. I waited until she was gone before grabbing my jacket and keys, slipping out the door a few minutes behind her. She drove across town to a part of the city we rarely visited. As I followed her car, keeping a safe distance, my mind raced with possibilities. Was she really cheating? Was this all in my head? I didn't want to believe it but the evidence was stacking up against her. She pulled into the parking lot of a fancy hotel, the kind of place we used to go for anniversaries before life got too busy. My heart sank as I watched her get out of the car, looking around nervously before walking inside. I waited a few minutes, then parked and followed her in. The lobby was quiet, almost too quiet, and I felt like everyone was watching me as I made my way to the front desk. I was shaking, but I forced myself to smile at the receptionist. Excuse me, I said, my voice sounding strange in my own ears. My wife just checked in, but I forgot which room she said she'd be in. Can you help me out? The receptionist looked up, clearly bored, and typed something into her computer. Name? Jenna Miller, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. She nodded, still not looking at me. Room 512. Do you need a key? No, that's okay. Thanks. I walked to the elevator, my legs feeling like lead. As the doors closed behind me, I felt a wave of nausea. What was I doing? What if I was wrong? What if she was just meeting a friend for dinner or something? But deep down, I knew that wasn't true. The elevator ride felt like it took forever, but finally, it dinged and the doors slid open on the fifth floor. I stepped out, my heart racing, and made my way down the hallway to room 512. The door was slightly ajar, and I could hear voices inside, Jenna's voice, and a man's voice, low and smooth. I pushed the door open, not caring if they heard me. And there they were, Jenna, sitting on the edge of the bed, and some guy I'd never seen before, standing way too close to her. They both looked up in shock as I walked in. Jake! Jenna gasped, jumping to her feet. What are you doing here? I didn't answer her. I couldn't. 
I just stared at them, my mind blank. The guy, let's call him Alex, took a step back, raising his hands in a gesture of peace. Hey, man, it's not what it looks like, he started, but I cut him off. Save it, I snapped, finally finding my voice. I don't care what it looks like. I know exactly what's going on here. Jenna started to cry, but I didn't care. All I could think about was how much I wanted to punch this guy's lights out. But I wasn't going to give him the satisfaction. Instead, I turned and walked out, slamming the door behind me. As I made my way back to the car, my mind was racing. I felt like I was in some kind of bad movie, like this couldn't really be happening. But it was, and I knew I had to figure out what to do next. That night, I didn't go home. I couldn't. Instead, I drove around aimlessly, trying to make sense of everything. Eventually, I ended up at a bar, nursing a drink and trying to drown out the thoughts swirling in my head. I knew one thing for sure, I wasn't going to let them get away with this. Over the next few days, I laid low. I didn't answer Jenna's calls or texts, and I didn't go back to the house. Instead, I checked into a hotel on the other side of town, spending my time figuring out my next move. I knew I needed to hit them where it hurt, to make sure they both paid for what they'd done. I started by digging into Alex's life. It wasn't hard, people put everything on social media these days. Turns out, he was married too, to a woman named Emily. They had two kids, a nice house in the suburbs, the whole nine yards. I felt a pang of guilt for what I was about to do, but it passed quickly. After all, he'd helped destroy my life, why should I care about his? I reached out to Emily, anonymously at first, sending her the evidence I'd gathered, photos of Alex and Jenna at the hotel, screenshots of their texts, everything. I figured she deserved to know the truth. But I didn't stop there. Next, I paid a visit to Alex's workplace. I knew from his LinkedIn profile that he worked at a tech company downtown, so I waited outside until I saw him leave. Then, I followed him to a nearby coffee shop, where he was meeting a colleague. I walked right up to their table and dropped the stack of photos in front of him. You might want to take a look at these, I said, my voice cold. And then maybe have a conversation with your boss about what kind of people you have representing your company. Alex's face went pale as he flipped through the photos. His colleague looked confused, but I didn't stick around to explain. I turned and walked out, satisfied that the seed had been planted. As for Jenna, I had something special planned for her. I didn't want to just serve her divorce papers, I wanted her to feel the same pain, the same humiliation, that she'd caused me. So, I made sure everyone in our social circle knew exactly what she'd done. I sent out a group email, detailing her affair with Alex, complete with photos. I knew it was petty, but I didn't care. I wanted her to feel the sting of betrayal just like I had. When Jenna finally tracked me down, she was a wreck. She showed up at my hotel room, eyes red and puffy from crying, begging me to take her back. But I was done. I couldn't even look at her without feeling sick. Jake, please, I'm so sorry, she sobbed. I don't know what I was thinking. I love you, I really do. Please, we can fix this. I stared at her for a long moment, trying to feel something, anything, but there was nothing left. Whatever love I'd had for her was gone, burned away by the anger and betrayal. No, Jenna, I said finally, my voice flat. We're done. You made your choice, and now you're going to live with it. I served her the divorce papers right there, watching as her face crumbled when she realized what she'd lost. She tried to argue, to plead, but I wasn't interested. I walked away from her, just like she'd walked away from her marriage, and I didn't look back. The weeks that followed were tough. I'd lost my wife, my home, and a big chunk of my life. But I was free, free from the lies, the deceit, and the betrayal. I focused on rebuilding, on finding myself again, and slowly, I started to heal. As for Jenna and Alex, well, they got what was coming to them. Emily took Alex to the cleaners in the divorce, getting the house, the kids, and a hefty alimony check. Last I heard, he was living in a crappy apartment, trying to make ends meet. 
Jenna, on the other hand, lost everything, her reputation, her friends, and most importantly, me. She tried to start over, but it wasn't long before she realized the grass isn't always greener on the other side. One day, a few months after the divorce was finalized, I ran into her at the grocery store. She looked different, older, tired, like the weight of her choices had finally caught up with her. She tried to make small talk, but I wasn't interested. I'd moved on, and I wasn't about to let her drag me back into the past. As I walked away, I felt a strange sense of peace. I'd been through hell and back, but I'd come out the other side stronger. And in the end, that's all that mattered. But here's the thing, revenge isn't always sweet. It doesn't erase the pain or undo the betrayal. It's just a way to cope, to make sense of the chaos when your world is falling apart. And sometimes, it's enough to help you move on. So, if you ever find yourself in a situation like mine, just remember, life goes on. People make mistakes, and they pay for them. But in the end, it's up to you to decide how much power you're going to give them over your life. Me? I took my power back, and I never looked back. And that's how I got my revenge. If you leave a comment, tell us what you think about the story you heard, it's important to us and will help us find and tell stories that you find interesting. Thank you for watching us.